it's, it's a work ethic. And Weiss is some of the hardest work in the world. And it's, it's a hard work, but it's honest. The steps we go through to create an oyster environment, to make that environment grow, to get that environment to the process and to get it to the consumers is pretty dynamic. Basically, uh, it starts off with me, or my dad, or my uncle. If you want to start originally, go to the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries, apply for an oyster lease and application form. Get that application granted, given to you as a lease. Then you go out and you assess what needs to be done. Most instances, you have to do something to that water bottom to create habitat for oysters. And that comes where we'll either buy shells, oyster shells back, limestone, crushed concrete, any, any kind of hard substrate to create that water bottom and make it more conducive to oyster production. Then if we don't get a natural spat, a spawn, we call it spat, we'll hopefully rely on the public grounds to have some seed oyster to place on there. Between those processes, it, the ideal scenario would be three years from the time you got a lease to the time you harvest your first oyster would be wonderful. You know, in the ideal world, that's what you're looking for. Typically, two dredges on the boat, throw those dredges over and drag on the bottom and those, those dredges rake the bottom and pick up the oysters. Your crew will pick out the market oysters and, and push over the, the undersized oysters in the shells. Usually you've got one or two men on a table with you and you need gloves, protect your hand, you need a hatchet, a small hatchet at that. And I'm gonna separate, knock off the little baby oysters, I'm gonna knock off the shells, I'm gonna knock off the other foreign items like mussels that I, I can't market. And I'm, I'm gonna throw that back in the water. So my way of thinking was, that's an investment, and I don't care what business you're in, you developing future inventory has a cost and it's, it's an investment. And until recently, not many people wanted to give recognition to that, but because of the work of the Oyster Task Force, little things like that are becoming known to people. You have to look at your market conditions, you have to go see your dealers, get orders, and once you, you receive your orders for so many sacks, you go out and catch them and you meet them at a dock and they load the oysters on their trucks and if it's a good high quality product that that, that particular dealer can use, he'll reorder and you'll keep working that way. Then you have a whole nother operation that takes this product in and, and then they, they wash it, they grade it, they, they either shuck it or they pack it into a half shell pack and then it goes out into the broader distribution market. What's amazing is that one oyster is going to touch the human hands as much as five to seven times before it reaches the consumer. My family in a, in a normal year will employ as much as 35 to 50 harvest families. Not to mention the docks, you know, three or four docks that have people working at the dock. The truck drivers who haul the oysters processing plants who have a lot of labor, you know, 30, 40 people at least working in their processing plants. Then it goes to the distributors who haul them to the restaurants and supermarkets. So the amount of people that benefit off of what one oyster form does is amazing. It involves a whole network of people and we're talking about, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that, that depend on, on, on this economy, the oyster economy in our state. When you have an oyster community, you have people who want to come and fish in those areas. And when they fish in those areas, they buy gas down here, they rent rooms, they visit the restaurants. So they, they help support the community. Our oysters go all over the country. Uh, we couldn't eat them all here in Louisiana. Raw, straight out the water when they're salty, hands down is my favorite dish. On, on any given day, I'm on that water, you're gonna catch me tonging up some oysters. You know, when they're really salty, I don't need supper. I'll come home full. <laughs>